friends and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about small, un-Instagram worthy kitchens. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like whenever I see kitchen organization videos on YouTube or like anywhere really, it's always in these really nice pretty kitchens with these like perfect drawers and cupboards. And listen, that's all fine and well, but I also know a lot of kitchens don't look like this. And I know that because, well, my kitchen in my house definitely doesn't look like this. And prior to this house, I've lived in eight different houses and none of them had these kind of kitchens either. Luckily, living in a lot of normal kitchens, and yes, I'm going to call these kinds of kitchens normal because I would bet there are a lot more of us living in un-Instagram worthy kitchens out there than are not, means that I've had to think of really clever and practical ways to use my space in my kitchen to make the most of them. And I've shared some kitchen organization videos in the past and I always get comments from people saying they really appreciate seeing tips from a normal kitchen. And I really love that because the one thing that I aim to do here on my channel is help you guys find ways to simplify your lives in real honest ways. I want you to know that yes, you can organize a small kitchen with 100 year old cabinets, my current kitchen. Yes, you can make the most of a 100 square foot house as a family of four with two adults working from home full time. See my last video, I'll link that down below. Yes, you can find rhythm and daily productivity as a mom of two little babies. Yes, you can take control of your clutter even if you're short on time. I think you get my point. Now this house that we live in right now is actually the first of all of these houses that we've ever actually owned. So we're pretty excited that in the next year we're going to be making a big investment on this house and finally renovating our kitchen. And so while well, I'm like so excited to do this, like seriously so excited. Never in my life as a child or as an adult Hey, have I lived in a house that had a new kitchen? So this feels very unreal to me, but I'm also a little bit sad about it because I love my weird, quirky old kitchen and I love being able to use it to show you like, hey, listen, you can make whatever you have work for you. But I wanted to get in at least one more kitchen organization video and sort of share with you some little tricks and tips that I have used to make the most use of this space even when the kitchen is not set up, maybe in the most useful or practical way. Also, I wanna let you know that today's video is also sponsored by HelloFresh, so stay tuned to hear how I use that to maximize my small kitchen. All right, guys, we are just going to dive right into this video by conquering one of the worst cupboards in my kitchen. Now, the cupboards that are in my kitchen, um, my house was built in 1930, and I would reckon that these cupboards are original to this house. And saying reckon makes me feel like I'm in an old timey cowboy movie, but we're just gonna go with it. At some point, somebody put new faces on them, but the actual cupboards themselves, very, very old. And specifically the cupboards right below me, these guys down right here, which they also have green samples on them right now. Cause like I said, we're renovating. We're trying to decide what color green. I think it's gonna be this green. I don't, I'm not sure. What green do you guys like? Let me know in the comments. Anyways, particularly those bottom cupboards are the worst. It's also just a very awkward shape. It's very old. I've cleaned it. I've given it a fresh coat of paint, but it's just kind of like, whatever. It's an old cupboard. And so I've sort of neglected it. So I'm gonna show you what this looked like just a few days ago when I was being quite neglectful of it. And I realized this was not in my normal spirit of like, make it work for you if you can. So I found some smart kitchen organization items that actually have made way better use of this cupboard space. Okay, so the first thing I did was get some of the smart kitchen organization items that I had bought unpacked. And I was obviously getting very into my music on this particular morning. And I'll give you guys three seconds to go ahead and take a guess of what you think I'm listening to in the comments down below. <laughs> All right, anyways, the first and best thing I got for kitchen organization was definitely this pot holder. It slides into the bottom of the cupboard and then you just screw it into place with a single screw to secure it. And this allows you to easily stack all of your pans. I really love this because we use a lot of cast iron pans and I hate stacking them because I don't want them to rust. So I often leave them out on the oven, which is just cluttered. But most importantly, I can easily grab the pan that I want without having to like sort through them all, which is what you do when you stack them and it's a pain to put your clean pans away this way. And it's just kind of how you end up with the mess that I had before. So I'm really happy with how this thing turned out and I'm definitely going to be bringing it along when we do the reno. Now I had less luck with a lids organizer. I bought this lid organizer, but 
of like flimsy, so I'm gonna have to keep searching to find the right one. Anyways, the point I wanted to make is just with one or two small investments of things between $15 and $25, I can make way better use of this very sort of awkward, weird space to make it work better for me. Okay, the next area I wanna show you is our paper organizer, because while we don't usually think about kitchens as a place for paper, who can, with a show of hands, tell me how often paper ends up in your kitchen. Go ahead and think about it for a minute. Mail, kids forms from school, random notebooks, receipts. Kitchens just tend to be these like catch-alls for paper. So I always suggest having something in place for paper in your kitchen, because whether you want to admit it or not, you're going to end up with some type of paper in the kitchen. So I do have an entire video all about paper organization. I'm gonna link that down below for you if you need it. But one specific thing in the paper department that I wanna show you is my meal planning binder that I use as part of my paper organization. So let me show you what I keep inside. Now I am big on meal planning. I've shared this with you guys before. I cannot explain to you how much time and how much money it saves me to plan my meals for the week ahead of time. I will link my video down below on how I meal plan, but generally I use this binder. I keep my favorite recipes in here and then I use these printables to help me organize my food inventory, make lists, create my weekly meal plans. These are all printables that are available on my uh, website, by the way, so I will link my printables page down below where you can get these all for download. Now, not only does meal planning save me time and a ton of money, but I also find it super key in my small kitchen because when you're limited on space, you really need to be proactive about eating through what you have in your pantries and in your freezer because you don't have the space to keep everything in stock all the time. So meal planning just allows me to stay on top of what I have and use it up before I need to buy more. And like I mentioned earlier, today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. Um, and HelloFresh actually helps me do the same thing. So my husband and I have been using HelloFresh on our own for quite a few years. So when they reached out to me about working together, it just seemed like a really natural fit because this is a product that I actually use and I have been using and buying with my own money for multiple years. So HelloFresh boxes send seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients right to your door with a wide variety of quick, but delicious meal options. And personally, I like that the dinner, there's still dinners that like I'm cooking myself, but the step-by-step -step directions and the pre-measured ingredients just make it super quick and super easy, saving me tons of time. Most of the meals get to the table in just about 30 minutes. Now, what I love about HelloFresh as someone with a smaller kitchen is their recipes are unique. They help me break out of my recipe rut, but since I'm still getting all of the ingredients pre-measured, I don't have to take up space in my kitchen afterwards for these unique delicious meals. You know when you want to try a new recipe but you only need like a teaspoon of something or a cup of something so then you have to buy it and then you have all the leftover ingredients taking up space in your pantry and you got to figure out how to use them again. With HelloFresh this isn't an issue. Not to mention I'm saving money on not having to buy full-size products every time if I want to try something new. And as a busy mom with two kids, we love it when it's a HelloFresh week at our house because it takes some of the pressure off me for that week to have to worry about meal planning and meal prep. And lately, I've been increasing my box size so I can double the amount of leftovers that I have for the next day. If you want to give HelloFresh a try for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com, use the code BFCOFFEE14 to get 14 meals plus free shipping. All right, moving right along, one of my favorite tricks for extra storage in small kitchens is making the use of inside of cupboard drawers. Very often we fill up our cupboards, but then there's actually still some space between the door and the things inside of the door when it's closed. So you can hang things on the inside of the door to get way more use out of your space. In our cupboards, I hung these two metal baskets to add extra storage for oven mitts and trivets, as well as my Ziploc bags, which I love. I made great use of this unused space in the house we rented before this and um, used some Dollar Tree baskets to make more room for cleaning products um, storage underneath the kitchen sink. Overall, there are just a lot of options for places you can get a little more storage on the inside of doors by using just some baskets and hooks. All right, another tip that I love using is drawer organizers. Now, obviously drawer organizers are amazing because they help you create structure in a space that maybe didn't have any, but not all drawer organizers 
um, are created equal, right? Some are hit or miss. Sometimes you find ones that are a really great fit, other times they're like too big or too small, and they don't actually end up helping as much as you hope that they will. And that's why recently I've been using these adjustable drawer organizers. They have springs inside of them, so they fit multiple size drawers, and you can really make them work for you in whatever size drawer you have. I actually have similar ones that I use upstairs in my daughter's dresser, and it works really great for making a better use of large drawers. My best tip for these is just make sure that you check like their maximum width and their minimum width so that you're buying something that fits your drawer. And don't forget to check heights as well. Something else I always suggest doing when you implement a new organization structure in a space is to consider labeling. I know sometimes it sounds kind of silly to like label in your own home. You're like, I made this organization, right? I should be able to follow it. But the truth is it is really easy for an organization structure we create ourselves to fall to the wayside, right? We can't always remember every little system we created. We have a lot of other stuff going on in our heads at all the time. Not to mention if you have other people who live with you, um, it's just really easy for your organization structures to slowly deteriorate. So I like using labels to help remind me of what I wanted where, and it helps sort of create the habit. And then once it's sort of set, then your brain will sort of autopilot, if that makes sense. Another really cool product that I found online was this utensil organizer, which is so ideal for small spaces because it allows you to sort of stack things vertically taking up less space horizontally. Now this would be really great for just like your forks and spoons and regular cutlery if you were tight on space for that, but I actually found use for it with my cooking stuff to hold some of my odds and ends for baking, keeping them organized without, like I said, taking up as much horizontal space. By the way, all the products you see in this video, I will link them down below. The next trick for smaller kitchens is to consider removing excess packaging whenever you can. Often packaging ends up taking up way more space than it's actually holding for you. And very often things like bags aren't sturdy and they just end up being more of a hassle than actually helping. So I like putting things like snacks and bars into baskets when I can. And I even prefer a lot of baking and cooking supplies to be in their own containers instead of the bags they come in. It makes it way easier to keep them organized in the pantry since they have flat tops and flat sides. You can also stack them, which makes that a lot easier for organizing. I also like this because it's also just way easier at a quick glance to see how much I have of something so I know if I'm running low or not. If it's inside the bag or the box, like the packaging, it's not always Always easy to see that at a quick glance. Along with removing excess packaging, I also like to create bins for like items in my pantry, specifically for things that I use at the same time. For example, I have one that has all things like nuts and seeds, which I would often want to grab if I'm making granola or I'm cooking up oatmeal. That way I can just pull out the whole bin, I can use it, and then I can put it all back when I'm done. This is all so great for like cooking or baking things. Maybe you have one with baking soda, baking powder, vanilla extract, you get what I'm saying. Using bins for like items, like I said, just allows you to pull it out when you need it and then put it all back at once. One other item I found was this raised tiered shelf. I have always liked the idea of tiered shelves in pantries because you can obviously see what's like in the second and third row a lot easier. But in small kitchens, I can't help but think about the lost space that's underneath that tiered shelf. So that's why I thought that this one was really neat because it has a little drawer so you could still make use of the space under the raised tiers. One more storage product that I love using in kitchens is these flip top Tupperwares. I adore these because they are stackable. The tops are attached and locked closed so you don't have to worry about misplacing them. And they are simple and clear so you can always see what's inside. These are so good for storage of some of the random odds and ends that get up end up getting stored in our kitchen because like we went over earlier with the paper thing, often kitchens end up holding more than just food. So I use them for things like vitamins, teas, our Nespresso pods. It's just such a simple and easy way to keep them all tidy because the bins are clear, stackable, and exactly the same size. One last tip I wanna mention all about making your kitchen work for you is to not forget that many kitchen cupboards are adjustable. And sometimes all it takes is making a shelf a little higher or a little lower to make it better serve you. So if a certain spot seems not to be working, see if changing up this shelving arrangement can help you out. All right guys, that does it for some of my favorite small kitchen or quirky kitchen or normal kitchen organization ideas. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope it inspired you to help you solve some storage and organization issues that you might have in your home, whether it's a beautiful Pinterest perfect kitchen 
or not. Don't forget to use the code BFCOFFEE14 to get 14 meals for free with HelloFresh plus free shipping. And if you want my meal uh, planning printables, I will link my printables page for you down below. As always, thank you so, so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you all in my next video.